Into the arena of the Don Juan Banks, we got the opportunity to talk to the champion, Lamont Peterson, who's about to face Danny Garcia on April the 11th. Champ, how's training camp been so far? Training camp's going well, you know, preparing well. Uh, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I feel energized. I feel, um, overall, I feel confident and ready to go. I'm in good spirits right now. Um, that's really good to hear, Champ. Um, what's your prediction on the outcome of the fight? Uh, of course, you know, I expect to win the fight. You know, I expect it to be a, a good fight, an entertaining fight and uh, the fight that the fans wanted to see for a while. Thank you so much. We hope you are victorious. Good luck. Thank you. I do. Uh, likely, you know, both of us will be moving up in, uh, for our next fight. So, really, the belts, I won't say that it don't, won't mean, don't mean anything, but, you know, it really wouldn't make a big difference for us because we're both looking to move up. You don't think you'll fight again at 140? No, I don't have to be a big fight, uh, maybe bigger than this one, if I was to do that. And our only fight would probably be bigger than this if it's a good fight and we rematch. I would want it to be at 140 pounds. At that point, I had more say so over what's going on and what weight class we're going to fight at and things like that. So, besides Garcia, who do you think at 140 pounds is bigger than he is as far as his money is concerned? I don't. I think that, that would be the, this. This is the biggest fight in the weight class that that uh, that can be made for me. So, uh, it wouldn't be really nothing else to do at the weight class. I would like to move up now, the next fight. But if it makes sense to stay at 140, I can still make it. I just want to see how I feel at 140 pounds, 47 pounds uh, at welterweight. Because a lot of times when I'm training, I feel great. You know, at 154, 100, and, you know, around that way, I feel great in training. Then when I start to get past 47, I get to 46, 45. I feel some of, you know, my strength go away, my energy go away. So a lot of times I'm just thinking, man, if I stay at 47, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be even stronger. I'll have more energy, you know, to fight. Yeah, I still eat the way I want. Uh, but it's just the fact of you building up muscles, you know, you're doing all this training, lifting weights and stuff. To only burn them off at, at the end of the day, to burn them off to make 140. And uh, I just want to see how it's going to feel at what's what. So basically, Garcia couldn't make 140, right? From what you hear. Not saying that he can't. He, he wasn't willing to do it. He didn't want to. So, fight was made at 43. It wouldn't matter what weight class we were before that. If it was welterweight, 135, whatever weight class they would have said, I would have took the fight and tried to make the weight. Any animosity between you two? None. You know, it's a business. This is what we do. He chose boxing. I chose boxing. No hard feelings against him, regardless of, even if he was trash talking, still no hard feelings against anyone, any of my opponents. Are you training to get stronger for this fight, or are you doing the regular training that you think? Regular training, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, knockout is a knockout or whatever, but I really honestly have yet to been in the ring with someone that I felt was like physically stronger than me, that was just too strong. So I'm gonna keep doing the same thing I normally do. And uh, I think that'll be good enough. What, what gives you the edge over uh, Garcia? 
I'm a better fighter. Oh, oh, you know, all around, skill-wise, I just feel like I'm a better fighter. And uh, you'll see that April 11th. A lot of fights, like you talk about, the super fast, strong. I mean, is it really about speed and, you know, strength, or is it more so about, you know, skills and time? It's about, it's more so about executing your game plan. You can be fast if you don't use it in the right, in the right way at the right time. It doesn't mean anything. You know, so it's all about skills, knowing when and when not to do things. So, about executing the game plan. This is one, you know, you, you, throughout your amateur career program, you always had an attitude of, you had an advantage of holding your kind of attitude. You don't stick to the game plan, you move your box skills, but sometimes as soon as you get hit, you break your dog out, and you start being able, then you start going to war. Are you going to be able, in my opinion, to have quicker speed? Well, the plan might be to just go out there and fight them. You know, to me, regardless of what I choose, I feel like I can win. So, who knows? And who said the game plan was to box or to move? I mean, I do have quicker feet, but you can use it for other things too. You can use your quick feet to go forward. They don't always have to be going backwards. So, um, sticking to the game plan, I will do. But who knows what the game plan is right now? Champ, you always been adamant about fighting Danny Garcia. Is it something about his style that you see that you can capitalize on? Nah, I would just like, you know, the fans wanted to seem like they wanted to see the fight. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure that fight happens. You know me, I never really call out names. If you ask who I want to fight next, it's, it's, I leave it to the fans and to the media because it's too many people I feel like fans want to see the fight, but fight never happens because they don't want to fight the person. Um, I can sit here and call out all different type of names of people I want to fight, but at the end of the day, it's, I'm doing it for the fans, for the media, so why not fight the people they want me to fight? Mayweather and Pacquiao just a few weeks later. Do you feel like you guys are both kind of trying to showcase yourself, especially considering you're both moving up in weight for us? Nah, not, not for me. If a fight with Mayweather or Pacquiao happen for me, then it, it happens. But if it don't, I will. I really don't care too much about it. Do you, do you feel like this type of fight against yourself and Danny Garcia could have made an undercard for Pacquiao and Mayweather? I wouldn't want to. You know, because uh, uh, when I do watch the Pacquiao or Mayweather fight, I want to watch as a fan. I don't want to be worried about me fighting or, you know, didn't have to try to watch their fight. I just want to sit back and enjoy their fight. If you're not thinking about those guys, what's enticing at one, about 147? It's just the way I feel when I'm training and when I'm around that weight. To know that I'm going to perform much better at the weight class. And it's a lot of names there. Did you watch Garcia and Martinez? Of course. Did you take anything from it? Um, not really. You know, I know that, like, you know, uh, all different, you know, when you fight someone, it's different styles, you want to fight differently. Uh, I just try to look at the things that I do well and try to execute them, the things that he does that he does well and take that away from him and the things he don't do well and kind of force him to do that more often. Things like that is what I look at when I'm preparing for a fight. I really don't look at a certain fight and think that, well, he's going to fight me like that because this, that, that. But Matisse is a different fighter for me, different mentality, different you know, body uh, uh, shape. So I know he'll fight me different. So it really, is, if I try to learn from that fight, I might be making a mistake. We're saying, we're saying that. I noticed that Danny Garcia throughout his fights, he's more of a counter puncher and a, and a timer. You know, get his timing down with, with punches. So is there anything that you're going to do to set, offset that? Of course. You know, of course I'm not going to sit here and probably share that right now. But you'll see. You know, I have. He's definitely a counterpuncher, and uh, we have plans to make sure that um, that we get, uh, make sure that we don't get countered like others been countered from him in the past because uh, he do counter pretty good. But uh, we have a plan to to stop, you know, all of that and uh, 
be able to get to the fight and win the fight. Champ, what have you learned from the Medice fight? Uh, I think I answered this a few times. Uh, nothing really inside the ring, just something about me. And uh, I was happy with that, with that fight. You know, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but uh, I'm happy I did fight. I'm happy the fight went the way it went. And uh, I think y'all see more in the future that, uh, of why I say that. Yeah, of course. Um, your mentality is, is, is you. You know, it's, it's you. You're, and it always show in the ring, especially in the late rounds. You know, that you ask your, you know, you ask a lot of your body when you're in that ring, and a lot of times it, it go to what it knows. So your personality, personality definitely uh, comes out, and I think that's where mine kind of shine over others. You know, normally, you know, in the later rounds, it's when I take over and uh, start getting, you know, start taking over the fight. So uh, I'm looking forward to the later rounds, as I always do in, in every fight. A lot of times, I be wishing we can do more rounds. This fight is on NBC. NBC has a show boxing for like 25 or 30 years. What's it like, you know, fighting with NBC? I know, like, you following doing your brother around. It was in your house. I mean, what was that like having, you know, cameras always in your face, always, you know, following you around? I mean, it was cool to get, you know, the camera crew, the guys were actually cool. It made it much uh, easier for me because uh, I'm, not, I'm a really, you know, I'm a private person. So, you know, I wasn't, when it was first talked about, I wasn't really too excited about, you know, them following me around as much as they did and being at my house and things like that. But. Overall, you know, I knew it was, you know, it's, it's part of the game. It's something I have to accept. And uh, actually, I had a good time. So basically we're saying that the overall preparation for this fight for the advertising, the promoting of this fight, it made you a little more comfortable pretty much getting that out of the way and going to concentrate on the fight? Yeah, I adjust to things pretty well. Even if I, if I don't like them or if I'm not comfortable with it, if it's necessary, then, then you know, I'll, I'll adapt to it. And that's exactly what happened this time. This is your last fight at 140 pounds. I mean, this fight is at a catch weight 140 years. So with that being said, like, would you have rather had the fight at, you know, 140 pounds? That way the belts can be on the line? Or, I mean, does it? Nah, I'd rather have it at 147. I mean, if we're going to do 43, we might as well just went on up the water weight and just fought there. I mean, I didn't understand it, but I wasn't going to complain about it. I know that, you know, I didn't want to uh, not make the fight happen, so I didn't complain about it a lot. Just... Okay, 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 we're going to fight. Champ, did you, is, is this a situation where you had to give in to Danny Garcia's demands? I didn't have to give, it, give in to him, but I decided to because it just, I, just, just, I just wanted to fight. And I was off for long enough already, and then, you know, it's like, uh, it's going to be seven months. You know, by the time I get in the ring, it'll be seven months. And for me, man, I can fight every three months. So seven is hell for me. Train for his power this time, or were you going to box? Or were you playing to um, just go for some power? I train for Danny Garcia. You got a big fight coming up uh, May 2nd, uh, Mayweather Pacquiao. What's your thoughts on that fight? Break it down. What happened? You know, just fought Mayweather a few years ago, so just, you know, break the fight down. I think Mayweather wins the fight, and, and I'm, if, if I'm going to bet money, I'm betting with Mayweather to win the fight. But I can see Pacquiao winning. Really not a, too much of a breakdown, but I've been trying to focus on my fight and not worry about this. We got another big fight coming up, uh, Gary Buster Jr. versus uh, Johnny Gonzalez. This Saturday, uh, who do you think wins that fight? Uh, Gary, you know, Gary's from D.C., from my hometown, so I'm pulling for him all the way. I think he should uh, win a decision. He's 
got to stay smart. Don't get caught up into uh, trying to bang with, with, with uh, Gonzalez. And uh, he should have a, a nice uh, victory and, and win a world title. Champ, um, I'm from Philadelphia. Uh, do you have a message you would like to personally deliver to Danny Garcia? Nah, no message for him. I know he'll show up. You know, he'll show up to fight. And, uh, you know, as a champion should. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. what I do most. Most days, you know, for this camp, it's, it was like three or four weeks straight where I just went 20 rounds or better. Non-stop, no breaks, no rest in between. That's how I get in shape. That's what I love the most. That's what I learn the most. So I, I do a lot of sparring. So as far as sparring partners, who can follow with, uh, DeMar. Yeah, Demar, Nicholson, uh, Brandon Quarles. I spar with him a lot. Of course, I spar with my brother, uh, Austin Trout. Uh, it's too many names. I just spar with anybody. A lot of times, I spar with the whole gym. You ever spar with Adrian? Uh, I didn't spar with him this for this camp. You know, we haven't sparred in uh, a few camps, but we do we do work. We do spar. the same you know I'll see you know when we get to the venue and how the fight we go and see if there's anything that changed but uh, they're both professionals they're both you know pretty solid they know what they're doing and uh, they do good work Be a good fight, you know. You got two two top guys, you know. Of course, Amir is it's a welterweight now, so I don't know how that would go. But you got two solid guys, you know. Make for a good fight. Too fast, you know. Too fast-handed guys, probably two of the fastest guys in in, in, in the box there. to stay as calm as possible. Just tell myself, I've been doing this for 21 years now. You know, it's just another day. It's another day at work. You know, I know it's going to be people there screaming, cameras, you know, microphones, you know, things like that. But just try to block it out. And just act like I'm in this farm. Like if no one was there, and just focus on the game plan and try to execute. It. Champ, your demeanor has been so, you know, laid back. In just has so much confidence. Is this is, is this something that you can just see about this fight um, with Danny Garcia? I feel like this. I still feel like I'm growing as a fighter. You know, just learning things, um, learning things about me and about the game. You know, I had my ups and downs in the game. You know, I learned my lessons. I just feel like everything is coming together, and this is my time, and it, and, uh, and I'll be victorious. What, what, what was your assessment about uh, his last two fights, um, Herrera and uh, Rod Tucker? Uh, the Herrera fight was, was a close fight. It was a good fight. You know, Danny showed heart, showed grit. You know, it didn't start off, you know, the best for him. But at the end of the day, he fought through it. You know, he got the W. Um, do, you, do you think he lost to uh, Herrera? I mean, you can call it. To me, it was an even way type of fight. You can call it whichever way you want. And they called it for Danny, so Danny won the fight. Any, any comments on the Rod Soccer fight? 
Um, I really haven't even watched that fight yet. <laughs> you were there. That's the funny. But the thing is, I you know I fought, and then uh, of course they had to go in the back for drug testing, and they was holding me there for you know. Then of course interviews, so I never ever got a chance to watch. Talk about drug testing. Is this like the same way? Are you guys doing, you know, drug testing? Uh, yeah, we've been random uh, drug tests for the last uh, month and a half. For the last month and a half, we've been doing random drug testing. Um, who knows? They might pop up today at any time. Uh, but you know, everything been going good. Everything been going cool, and uh, just happy that we are doing the random drug testing and, and everything's okay. It took a lot of I really don't care too much about it, you know, what happened. You know, I got what I wanted out of the deal, and uh, I'm happy. So whose idea was it to do, uh, you know, random blood? Uh, oh, for, for this fight? I, I, yeah, this fight and the previous fight. And, uh, oh, it's, it's kind of like, for me, mandatory now. You know, I asked for it in a con fight. That was the first time I actually asked for it. But after that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that's just, you know, when I just, you know, answered the other question, I said I got what I wanted out of it, so I'm happy with it, even though I had to take all this, the heat and the slack, you know, being a cheater and things like that. I actually got what I wanted, which was for, you know, all the top fights to be, you know, randomly drug tested. And uh, it seemed like that's what's happening. So if I had to take the heat for it, so be it. I got what I wanted, and I'm happy. Do you have other questions? Uh, um, what, do you mind sharing what agency uh, the drug testing is um, being b under? USADA. USADA, do you? Yeah, USADA stands out. I stand anti-testing agency. never go exactly the way you want them to go, when you want them to be. You know, a lot of times uh, we just think that we can do that up and tell God or just dictate when we're going to do things and how things will happen. A lot of times we just got to sit back and wait our turn. Excellent place. Couldn't be better.
trenches with these guys and many a day. Carl Dargan, uh, of course, them, the Allen boys, and you know, a lot of them, man. Eric, the outlaw hunter, he trains down here sometimes. So, we, and of course, Hank Wendy. Yeah. You know, yes. so um, we got a real link to Philly, man. Wow. Um, just you going into that history, you know, Brian Jennings is going against Vladimir Klitschko. Can you weigh in on that fight? Man, he got it. Brian Jennings got, you know, he's a good athlete. I always liked him, man. I like his I like his attitude, I like the mental, you know, uh, uh, side of him, and, and, and Hurt, uh, which is his trainer, you know, of course, you know, he comes through one of the most underrated coaches around, you know, and this dude had David Reed and some more, you know, when they were younger, so, the thing is, with Klitschko, he has to be solid, you know, and then you're on the biggest stage of your life. You gotta block out the cameras, the lights, the fan, the whole nine. Understand that you face a man, a man just like you. Feel it just like you do. You know, and you can't get caught up in the fact that I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, you got a big right hand. You gotta find out how to either reduce it, stay away from it, or take it away altogether. And, and be aggressive the whole time. Don't change what you are because it's who you're facing. Go in there the same way, and you got to go in there with the mentality I got to take from this man. Wow, wow. Um, th th this is amazing that what you're telling me about this fight. Um, we, we heard you briefly with my um, friend, DC Mike. You said that on April 11th, this is the fight of the century. Lamont Peterson versus Danny Garcia. 
I've been looking at him before, even when we were in um, the Barclays Center, when he uh, fought Edgar Santana, he said to me, I, I want Danny Garcia. Today he said, I want Danny Garcia. What is it about his mentality and his demeanor in, in, in the training camp that he wants this fight so bad? Does he see something, or, or is, it, this is, is this his destiny or something? Lamont is a throwback fighter, you know, uh, like the days when you had the best fight and the best with those guys that I named and I keep naming. Uh, legendary fighters, like Ray, you know, like Ali, yes. uh, like Hearns, Hagler, Duran, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Lupe Pinto, Yagi Lopez, yes. you know, all these guys, what made them great is that they fought other great fighters, they fought each other, so in order to be great or considered to be that, you ha and your validation had to come from fighting other great fighters. Danny Garcia right now is talented to be one of the best 140s on the planet. Some would say the best, depending on who you are. So in order for Lamont to consider himself to be among that number, in that number, or that one number, you got to fight these guys. So it, we never shy away from contract, uh, contact. We don't discriminate against nobody. You train, you lace up just like we do. Let's put it to the test and see who the best is. Wow. Um, the weight. It's it's at 143. I, I overheard you talking to DC Mike. Did you want it at 147? Did you, did you did, was that an issue or anything? We like were that? like, the month we wanted it at 140. You know, okay. of course, we wanted to lay everything on the line, but okay. you know, that's extra three pounds is what it took to, you know, get him in the ring with Danny. A fight that not only does the general public want to see, press want to see, as a fan, I want to see it too. You know, I'm, me personally, I'm tired of seeing hand-picked fights. Uh, you know what I mean? Me personally, I'm tired of seeing one guy that's a, a potential great fighter versus a guy that you won't see after that particular fight. We need to see fights, like I said, we want to get to the Hall of Fame also one day. And in order to get that validation, you got to go through fights like this to get there. Then overall, this thing is bigger than Lamont, it's bigger than Dan, it's bigger than uh, Barry Hunter, it's bigger than Angel Garcia. This thing is about boxing as a whole. You get ready to go back on NBC, the first network that broadcast professional boxing 30 years ago. You get ready to bring free boxing back to the true boxing fan, to the public. No longer do they have to wander or, you know, try to get to the internet or, or go over to somebody's house and just see. You go to the store, buy a TV, plug it in a wall, you got NBC. That's a beautiful thing. And then you got to not only get NBC the credit for giving us the launch pad to do this thing again, because the numbers for the first fight were staggering. March 7th. You got Yael Hammond even more credit for having the vision, putting this thing together. You just mentioned 140. I heard Lamont Peterson, the champ, say, I would have liked to have it there too. Were y'all, did y'all want to put the titles on the line? The title on the line? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was his thing. Lamont always, like I say, he, if, if not Danny Garcia, whoever the man is in that way, that's what we want to fight. He didn't take the fight or want to fight versus Danny Garcia because he thought Danny was a weak opponent or none of that guy. He got mad respect for the man, you mean, uh, as he should have. He wanted that fight because Danny was considered to be the best at one board. And in order for him to be considered the best, then you got to beat the best. Well, we have one last question. You know, there's been a lot of animosity in a lot of camps. Is there any animosity or, or between the coaches or anything? Do you and Angel see eye to eye, or, or, or is this just a competition? Is everything cool? Yeah, Angel always been, me and Angel always been cool. We got a little history pertaining to Danny. Like I said, that ain't for me to say. I'll let, you know, Angel or Danny tell that story if they want to. But they always been cool. You know, this ain't, this is business, man. This ain't never been, uh, uh, Lamont versus Danny or uh, Barry Hunter versus Angel Garcia. This thing is business. It's going to be love after and love before, especially on my end. When we fight, it's going to be wolf. I'm a wolf in there. And he's going to have to be a wolf too. I mean, but at the end of the day, man, we're going to break bread and business as usual. That's good to hear. Um, your prediction on how this fight will go? I think it'll start off being somewhat strategic. 
And somewhere down the line, I think it'll be a war. And then at the end, I think it'll be uh, uh, just come down to flat out wheel and who won the most. Thank you so much. Do you have any shout outs or anything like that? Oh, man, listen, I want to shout out to, you know, uh, just everybody in general. You know, the true boxing fan, you know, uh, uh, welcome back. It's been a long time. It'll be good to see y'all real soon. And I want to thank NBC and Al Heyman, man, for putting this thing together and bringing boxing back in such a big way. Okay. Uh, can you give a shout out to Enter the Arena, the company we were with? <laughs> Listen, I want to shout out to Enter the Arena. This is a good man. There's a good man on the other end of this, this recorder right here, man. And, and, and thank you guys for having us anytime. Thanks. Yeah, we love the chant. All right. I kissed that jump rope goodbye. <laughs> Into the arena, the Don Juan Banks. We got the light welterweight champion of the world, undefeated. It's a pleasure standing next to you today, April 11th. Yes, sir. Lamont Peterson, what's going through your mind? Oh, man, I just can't wait. I'm anxious, man. I feel like I've been training forever. So I'm just, it's just counting down now. Um, tomorrow's my last day of sparring, and it's, after that, we just worry about the weight, um, stay disciplined, and stay focused for the last week, and, and it's showtime on prime time. I mean, you're, you're a hero here in Philadelphia. We come from the same neighborhood, North Philly, so fans have been saying, when are you going to get Danny Garcia, the champ yeah. on the channel? Yeah. He's finally here. Okay, yeah. how was I'm training? Here. You're here, see? I'm here, man. <laughs> training went well. You know, I, was a, you know, I did a, um, some, a quick workout for the media um, just to give them a glimpse of what, I, what I've been doing. And, um, man, training camp is going well. And I, we're healthy, we're feeling strong, we're feeling good, we're confident. And April 11th is a uh, week and a half away, and we're going to put on for Philadelphia. I've, I've seen you in training camps before. I've never really seen you this serious. What is it about this fight with Lamont Peterson on NBC, PBC that means so much to you? Uh, it means the, the, a lot to me because it's a, I'm, when I walk into the ring April 11th, it's going to be millions of new viewers, uh, new viewers of um, boxing. So I'm, I'm reaching out to a new fan base and a, a, new, um, a, yeah, a, new, a new fan base and people who usually never watch boxing for the first time are going to be watching it for all ages. So it's very important for me to go out there and give them fans something to remember. Uh, Champ, how do you feel at this weight? We know it's going to be taking place at 143. Oh, uh, man, I feel good, man. I, I feel strong. Um, you know, I'm making my way up to 147 um, a little bit at a time. And, um, yeah, I feel great, man. I feel strong. Right now, I have to probably be a little bit smaller because the fight is next week. So I got to measure a few pounds. But I feel strong, as you can see. You know, I'm ripped up. I'm strong, and I'm ready to go. Man, you put on an extensive workout today yeah. for the media. Yeah. Um, we talked to your father. He said you're very focused. Yeah. He's, he, and, and he's been in your corner since the beginning. When you were 10 years old, he took you down to the gym. Uh, how has your father played a role in, in your training and becoming a champion? Oh, man, you know, he's a big role model in my life. He's a big role model in my life. He's been there since I was a little kid. So, um, you know, we, we're a good team. We work together. We understand each other. And we just make the best out of it. Okay. Last question. Everyone's asked you this question over and over again. Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather. Um, we remember a while back you gave him a stern warning. You was like, if Pacquiao wants to step in the ring with yeah. you, you would yeah. be ready to step in there. Yeah, I was ready. I was ready right now. Yeah, I was ready right now. So, um, But, you know, him and Pacquiao, I think it's a good fight for both of them. It's a perfect timing for them, you know. They're both, you know, at the end of their career, and it's a perfect time for them guys to cash out on a big fight. And, um... I think it's, it's going to be a tremendous fight, man. Um, like I said, it's perfect timing for them guys. And um, I'm just looking forward to a great fight. Your prediction? If I had to predict, um, I think, you know, it's, it's, I think uh, either fight either either fight has a chance to win. I think whoever shows up that night. Um, I, don't, I think if Manny Pacquiao doesn't try too hard and try to do nothing extra, he, he has a chance. He has a chance. He has a chance. He has to just, yeah. I think because he understands how big of a fight he might go in there and try to do something extra he's not used to doing. And then Floyd catch him with a shot, hurt him or something. So I think um, if I had to put my money on somebody, it had to be the undefeated Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. So, but I, I believe whoever, whoever shows up that night can win the fight. Thank you so much, Chan, for giving us the time. Good luck. Um, any shout-outs? Oh, man, shout-out to all my fans around the world. Um, visit uh, DSGOfficial.com, my website, or the DSG app. Um, I have my own app now, um, Facebook, uh, Danny Swift Garcia, yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram, Danny Swift Garcia, and Twitter at Danny Swift. Okay, can you give us a shout out, Into the Arena? Into the Arena? What's up, this is Danny Garcia, you're Into the Arena. Thanks, man. I soak in every moment of it, and I'm, I'm here with my 30th professional fight, and it's just a blessing. You know how, it's been 25 years since there was a lot of network, over-the-air network, Fox, which is coming back now. I mean, CBS is getting a little bit, and NBC is in it. 
how important is it to have, because you get a much bigger audience exactly. than you can even on, on HBO or, yeah. or, you know. You know, I think, I think it's very important. Um, I think the whole, you know, the whole point and the whole idea to, um, to this on, um, on the regular networks to broaden boxing, to make boxing big. I watch boxing all the time. You know, I'm a student of the game, so you 
This is a really good time for Philadelphia boxing. You got uh, Brian Fanning is going to uh, fight Klitschko. You got uh, Jesse Hart coming up and fighting uh, on the, the big May second card. Yeah. Uh, what, what about that? I mean, oh, I feel great, man. I just feel like it's taking pressure off me now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> was, you know it, was just, it was either me and Bernard, or it was either me and Bernard, and um, you know, nobody else was stepping up at that time. And you know, you know, it's just me. I had the title, and I'm just happy for everybody for Philadelphia, man, because you know. I, it's crazy because people are starting to notice now this is a boxing market. Like, we have great fighters in Philadelphia. And I'm happy for Brian Jennings, um, Jesse Hart, you know, Gabriel Rosado, you know, um, all the young fighters who, who's doing their thing on TV, and I'm just happy for them, man. It's just, you know, boxing is a, I mean, Philadelphia is a boxing city. It's just amazing, man. I'm just happy. Like I said, it's taking some pressure off me, so do your thing, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course, man. You gotta support my Philadelphia native. He's a, he's a, he's a Philly Rican like me, so you know I gotta hold him down. <laughs>
Yeah, I still be talking. <laughs> <laughs> Into the arena, the Don Juan Banks. We got the light welterweight champion of the world, undefeated. It's a pleasure standing next to you today, April 11th. Yes, sir. Lamont Peterson. What's going through your mind? Oh, man, I just can't wait. I'm anxious, man. I feel like I've been training forever. So I'm just, it's just counting down now. Um, tomorrow's my last day of sparring, and it's, after that, we just worry about the weight, um, stay disciplined, and stay focused for the last week, and, and it's, it's showtime on prime time. I mean, you're, you're a hero here in Philadelphia. We come from the same neighborhood, North Philly, so fans have been saying, when are you going to get Danny Garcia, the champ yeah. on the channel? Yeah. He's finally here. Okay, yeah. how was I'm training here. again? You're here, see? I'm here, man. <laughs> training went well. You know, I, was a, you know, I did a, um, some a quick workout for the media um, just to give them a glimpse of what, I, what I've been doing. And, um, man, training camp is going well. And I, we're healthy. We're feeling strong. We're feeling good. We're confident. And April 11th is a uh, week and a half away. We're going to put off Philadelphia. I've, I've seen you in training camps before. I've never really seen you this serious. What is it about this fight with Lamont Peterson on NBC, PBC that means so much to you? Uh, it means the, the, a lot to me because it's a, I'm, when I walk into the ring April 11th, it's going to be millions of new viewers, uh, new viewers of uh, boxing. So I'm, I'm reaching out to a new fan base and a, a, new, um, a, yeah, a, new, a new fan base and people who usually never watch boxing for the first time are going to be watching it for all ages. So it's very important for me to go out there and give them fans something to remember. Uh, Champ, how do you feel at this weight? We know it's going to be taking place at 143. Oh, uh, man, I feel good, man. I feel strong. Um, you know, I'm making my way up to 147 um, a little bit at a time. And, um, yeah, I feel great, man. I feel strong. Right now, I have to probably be a little bit smaller because the fight is next week. So I got to measure a few pounds. But I feel strong, as you can see. 
you know, I'm ripped up, I'm strong, and I'm ready to go. Man, you put on an extensive workout today yeah. for the media. Yeah. Um, we talked to your father. He said you're very focused. Yeah. He's, he, and, and he's been in your corner since the beginning. When you were 10 years old, he took you down to the gym. Uh, how has your father played a role in, in your training and becoming a champion? Oh, man, you know, he's a big role model in my life. He's a big role model in my life. He's been there since I was a little kid. So, um, you know, we, we're a good team. We work together. We understand each other. And we just make the best out of it. Okay. Last question. Everyone's asked you this question over and over again. Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather. Um, we remember a while back you gave him a stern warning. You was like, if Pacquiao wants to step in the ring with yeah, you, you would yeah. be ready to step in there. Yeah, I was ready. I was ready right now. Yeah, I was ready right now. So, um, But, you know, him and Pacquiao, I think it's a good fight for both of them. It's a perfect timing for them, you know. They're both, you know, at the end of their career, and it's a perfect time for them guys to cash out on a big fight. And, um... I think it's, it's going to be a tremendous fight, man. Um, like I said, it's perfect timing for them guys. And um, I'm just looking forward to a great fight. Your prediction? If I had to predict, um, I think, you know, it's, it, I think uh, either fight either either fight has a chance to win. I think whoever shows up that night. Um, I, don't, I think if Manny Pacquiao doesn't try too hard and try to do nothing extra, he, he has a chance. He has a chance. He has a chance. He has to just, yeah. I think because he understands how big of a fight he might go in there and try to do something extra he's not used to doing. And then Floyd catch him with a shot, hurt him or something. So I think um, if I had to put my money on somebody, it had to be the undefeated Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. So, but I, I believe whoever whoever shows up that night can win the fight. Thank you so much, Champ, for giving us the time. Good luck. Um, any shout-out? Oh, man, shout-out to all my fans around the world. Um, visit uh, DSGOfficial.com, my website, or the DSG app. Um, I have my own app now, um, Facebook, uh, Danny Swift Garcia, um, Instagram, Danny Swift Garcia, and Twitter at Danny Swift. Okay. Can you give us a shout-out, Into the Arena? Into the Arena? What's up? This is Danny Garcia. You're Into the Arena. Thanks, man.
after him, my dad still be talking. <laughs>
what's up? This is Danny Garcia. You're into the arena. Thanks, man. Arena, the Don Juan Banks with the champion's father, Angel Garcia. This has been an intense training camp right here. You look, oh, yeah. the champ looks very focused. Thank you. How's training camp been so far? It's been great. You know what I mean? No injuries. Everything's been perfect. You know, the champ looking good. His weight is perfect. Everything's like it's scheduled to be perfect. Excellent. Um, what, what do you think is going to be, how do you see this fight, the outcome of this fight? Well, the thing is this. I'm not going to estimate Peterson, but that's not my job to worry about him. All I know is that April 11th, Danny's going to show up to Barclays. The bell's going to ring and Danny's going to get on his job. And if, if, and if Peterson wants to, and he wants to stand in front of the champ, well, let's not say champ because there's no tight end ball. Let's say the undefeated fighter, then he's going to get what he deserves. He's going down to the ground. Wow, um, it's on. It's PBC on NBC. It's going to be on right, right. NBC. This exactly. is how big this is. Um, channel Ten. Imagine that, where where you could just flick a channel is there. World world champ, world elite fighters. Mm -hmm. The champ, he's beloved in Philadelphia. We Thank all you. support him. Um, in, in this in this uh, bout with uh, Lamont Peterson, it, it was at a catch weight. Um, do you have any comment on that? Well, the thing is, I mean, I don't have no comment, but he's still the champ. I mean, he's still junior one three champion of the world. You know, it was, a, it was a decision made by Al, Danny, and myself, you know, to fight Peterson. Because remember, he's the IBF champion. Yes, yes. So it would have been great if we unified the title. That yes. would have been perfect. Because yes. then he would have catched that title in the IBF, and then he could have caught the WBO in the future. Yes. Then he would have been the first Latino ever to sanction all yes. titles in one yes. division. Yes. And from Philadelphia at that. Yes. But 43 is good. You know, at the end of the day, it's about the fighters, because fight night, they usually be up there 5,200, 52 anyway. So. So I think it's perfect. It's, you know, there's nothing wrong about being 143. It's still, it's still world lead fighting. It's still, you know, undefeated fighters in there. NBC, April 11th. Yes, 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 uh, Mr. Garcia. Um, he was impressive against Rod Sarker. He, he oh, took him out. You. Um, you know, a lot of people had criticism of the Herrera fight, um, but that's the past. No, yeah, but the thing was this. I mean, it's like you going up to work every day, and, you, and things don't go perfect for you. It's not like we lost him. People say he lost. How he lost when? When I looked at the fight myself, and I'm the first critic Danny got, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be straight up with you, I don't sugarcoat things in life. Yes, yes. I see how I, I say how I see it. Yes. The thing is, out of 12 rounds, we won nine. I gave him three of courtesy. Mm -hmm. How you win with three rounds? First of all, you was coming with headbutts mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and, a, and a jumping and leaping jab like a head like a bull. You'd be frustrated too, somebody headbutting you all night. You know, at the end of the day, they said it was favoritism, but the thing is this: how is it favoritism? When the, first, the only judge in there, Puerto Rican, had it a draw from round one. It would have been favoritism. The, the Puerto Rican judge would have had Danny unanimous decision. He gave it a draw. So imagine that. But it, it showed that the champ had heart. Well, exactly. It had heart, and he kept well, going. Exactly. It showed that his boys this day, he's still coming, and he makes a job. He gets the job done. That's what that shows. Yes, it does. You know what I'm saying? Herrera could run with it, but right now, he thinks he's a superstar. <laughs> Oh, well, you look where it's getting him, but um. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. He should be thanking me, right? Paying me dinner. <laughs> well, Mr. Garcia, first of all, thanks for giving us this opportunity thank you, because bro. you know we got some history here. Oh, but yeah. I'm you, glad bro. that you came on into the arena. Thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, any shout outs? Yeah, brother. You know, April 11th. Don't forget NBC April 11th. Don't forget to watch. You guys got to do a little turn that knob, channel 10. Don't forget Eastern time, eight o'clock. Thank you. Angel Garcia. Peace.